Good morning, everyone, and let's take a look at all the banned popper cards today. Due to popular request, we're going to, I guess, you know, sort of review these things to see how powerful they are. Do they really deserve to be banned? If anyone plays the popper format, here's your chance to voice your opinion. So, uh, as usual, starting in alphabetical order, we get to Arkham's Astrolabe. Now, just for any, you know, clarity, uh, this card is actually banned in a lot of formats. It's banned in Modern. It's banned in Legacy. So, it's not too ridiculous that it's actually banned in, in Popper. But in Modern and Legacy, it acts like an incredibly good source of mana. Basically fixing anything in your deck, especially when it comes to a format like Legacy, where you could get eaten up by Blood Moon, Wasteland, back to basics. You'd like to have a lot of basics on the battlefield and still have access to all the mana you could possibly want. Because if you have Snowlands in play, they don't count as non-basic lands. That's probably the worst part of that mechanic. It's like the snow basic is still a basic. It should just be considered a snow land and non-basic. Problem solved. Now, um, Arkham's Astrolabe does come with a caveat when, no, not really a caveat, it's a bonus. When Arkham's Astrolabe enters the battlefield, draw a card. Draw a card. That's good value, and while that hasn't been completely abused in something like Modern or Legacy, that actually was a problem in Popper. So from what I understand, this card got banned because it was too valuable to the Blink decks of the time. I think there was like a Mono White or Boros Blink deck. Is that the same thing as the Boros Bully deck? Uh, probably not. There was something like, you know, blink this, blink that, get lots of value. That was too much value. Lord Max, Lord Max is going to play Popper tonight. Did this really need to draw a card? Well, here's the thing. If it doesn't draw a card, it's not playable. Because there are other cards like Arkham's Astrolabe that exist, but don't draw a card. You know, it's like, the, it's like Veil of Summer versus, what is it, Autumn's Veil? You know, they're the same card, basically, but one drew a card, one not. So they're able to push one into playability. They tacked, like, draw a card attached to it. Core Sky Fisher was a great combo with this card. Core Sky Fisher. Fishing for Merfolk from the sky. When Core Sky Fisher enters the battlefield, return a permanent you control to its owner's hand. And then you could replay the Astrolabe, and you get another card. Astrolabe looks so innocent. But then it replaces itself, fixes your mana, and takes your mother out to dinner, though. Exactly. The draw makes it worse than just the fixing. It depends on the format. Like, I mean, no matter what, like, we love drawing cards. You don't lose anything playing your Arkham's Astrolabe. It's a complete free roll, except that it takes up a slot in your deck. But I think the card draw mattered more for Popper than it did for Modern or Legacy. Not that it didn't matter. Like, hey, we all like drawing cards. This this card would not see play if it wasn't for the card draw. But it was because that they were bouncing it and blinking it in Popper that this thing apparently wasn't beatable. The banning of this card ruined my modern meme snow deck. <laughs> would you say Astrolabe led to a snowball effect? Um, maybe in Popper, maybe. In Modern and Legacy, I don't think so. It was just really good value. It was just really, it was it was it was just like a really good utility card. But I think in Popper, you could say that as you draw more cards, more cards to blink this card, you draw even more cards, and then things get out of control. Astrolabe is the guy. She tells you not to worry about meme. Look at Mana Silix. Is this the same thing? Yeah, see, Mana Silix sees no play. Although, if you want the original one, it's 24 cents. Add one, just one mana, pay one, tap, add one mana uh, of any color to your mana pool. And we've got Arkham's Astrolabe here, same thing. You know what would have made it way more fair? If you had to pay a Snowland. Uh, t I, if I remember correctly, yeah, paying a Snowland makes a big difference, because then that would cut a lot. You could use dual land mana to turn that into any mana that you want. But if it was all Snowlands all the time, 
It probably still wouldn't be fair enough, but it would be more fair. Mana Silix is actually pretty okay as a two of Ventron. Snoko was a thing, and they said that was a that they said this was the problem, not Oko. Oh, they're all well. That Oko deck, I mean, it had a lot of problems in it. I mean, at its peak, it was just playing with a bunch of banned cards. Is Astrolabe comparable to Bobble in any way? It is. It is very comparable to Bobble. Very, very comparable. Mark my words, Bobble gonna go one day. Not today, not tomorrow, but one day. Did you just alchemize Arkham's Astrolabe? I have no idea what that means. Okay, so uh, how good of... Now, here's the question. How good was this in Popper? Was it really worth the banning? For anyone that plays Popper. I mean, I can definitely see this as a problem. I just can't tell if this is one of the more powerful bannings in Popper. You know, when we're looking at this Popper list, it's a lot of rubbish. Like, when you, when you look at the Legacy ban list, you look at the Modern ban list, you're like, yeah, yeah, those are really good, powerful cards. You look at the Popper ban list, it's like, this is just a load of crap. This is just a bunch of draft commons and stuff like that. Why is this card banned? It was a very good ban. People are happy about the ban. Bobble not making you randomly immune to non-basic hate makes it way less bad. Oh, this thing took over Popper? All right, so it was a worthy ban. All right, we got a lot of other to cards here. Let's look at Atog. The Atog. Oh yeah, this was ban. This used to see playing the Affinity decks, right? This is a recent banning. I could totally see this. So a red, one generic, one two creature. Sacrifice an artifact. Atog gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. So basically, you're perpetually attacking with this Atog. I don't even know how the decks were built. Maybe you can give it unblockable. But if you ever attack with this Atog, and it's not blocked. You're dead. You're just gonna get smoked. They sacrifice all the artifact lands. They got the artifact lands legal in Popper. You look at like Seat of Synod. I mean, these are legal. Banned in Modern, which is just bizarre. Look, banned in not banned in Legacy. They have all the fast artifact mana there anyway, though. Um, yeah, not banned. Not banned in Popper though. Very, very legal. Very legal. Very, very, very legal. Uh, so Atog can just sack all the artifact lands in play and one-shot you to death. Or close to death. That mill guy has a bunch of popper shorts illustrating just how busted these cards in the format. Oh yeah, so he goes over every single one. Every banned card. Kissy kissy Mr. Fishy. Thank you so much. The deck ran fling. Oh god. So hit him for a ton. Or oh, so you don't even need you don't even need to get in the damage. You could in theory just sack your board. Sack the board to the Atog, then fling it at your opponent's face. As an additional cost to cast this spell. Sacrifice a creature. Wonder which one I'm gonna sacrifice. Fling deals damage equal to the sacrifice creature's power to any target. What a combo. You'd need ten artifacts in play though to really make that work. Only time I experienced a tog was back in Mirrodin. Was cute until it kicked my teeth in. Yeah, it didn't need to be blocked. They ran the fling. But you could attack with it. It is possible. <laughs> Remember when Popper was commons only before Wizards of the Coast ruined it and made any uncommons? So what you're telling me is that Wizards of the Coast is sort of intruding on your format. Is that what you're telling me? I mean, they do that. So, like, if, you know, how it works with, you know, Modern and Legacy is that they're just, and Commander, they're just printing these ultra-powerful cards to help sell cards for that format. But there's, I, like, I don't know if they're doing this intentionally or this is just for the better draft experience. They're putting cards from, like, uncommon to common in newer sets in order so, so that they can squeeze into Popper. Because in the Popper, by Popper rules, if anything was a, a common once ever in the history of the game, it's Popper legal. So all Wizards, have to do, all Wizards has to do is snap their fingers and boom, rares can be downshifted to uncommon and then one day downshifted to common and we're back, we're back to Popper legal. 
Flingatog. Fling... Flingatog, good riddance. Was this an affinity card, or was this a whole deck in itself? Like, a Tog the deck. I think it was an affinity card, though. Now that they have the po that popper format team at Wizards of the Coast, so now the format might actually be healthy. It's not it's not a team. Like it's a it's like a council. It's more of a council and they give they just give their thoughts to Wizards of the Coast and then Wizards will like say whether they're going to do something or not. And I have a feeling they have little influence on when cards get downshifted. I think they have more influence if cards get banned. Or it was the affinity deck. Well, they did downshift experiment one from rare to common. Is that right? How far has No, I don't think it was it was uncommon. It was never rare, unless you're talking if unless you think this promo was a rare. Doesn't count. Gate crash was the first uh, existence of experiment one. And then it went down to common. All right, a tog probably busted in half. Was a tog be played together with Disciple of the Vault? Uh, probably it was. I'm sure this card was absolutely busted in half. Moving on to Bonder's Ornament. This, thing, this card means nothing to me. Three mana, tap, add one mana of any color. All right, so we got some mana ramp. Then four mana tap, each player who controls a permanent named Bonder's Ornament draws a card. I think this, this was like a control, wasn't this like a control card? And like if the Bonder's Ornament wasn't dealt with, then that player just drew enough cards. That's cr you look at this so far, after looking at Arkham's Astrolabe and Bonder's Ornament, whoever, whatever player can draw cards, on a regular basis, they just seem to win the game. Finally, card advantage actually matters. It's a Tron card. Makes sense. They're, they're the ones who could use the mana. Tron mana. Oh my god, is it gonna is it gonna be Ugin? Is it gonna be Karn? No, it's Bonder's ornament. Commander Legends. This was banned because of Tron. Oh, this is a yeah, this is a Commander Legends card. Commander 2020. Where it's a commander card. It looks like a jank commander card, too. Dark Dweller Oracle went from rare to common with a snap of a finger. Is everything banned, either Affinity or Tron? We'll, we'll find out. H. It is a funny thing. Tron, being one of the more powerful decks in modern, has been a tier one for an incredibly long time. Is legal in Popper. Legal. You can play with the Tron mana. In theory, you can play Eldrazi Tron. There are, I don't know how many common Eldrazi there are, but it's possible. But you can just play it anywhere and let the other player pay uh, for you to draw. Oh, that's true. Popper has pre-modern cards. Wait until they see the Storm Bands. Oh yeah, that's a deck too, isn't it? You see, Popper and Modern, they're more similar than different than you would think. Just too messed up for Tron, it made other control decks laughable since you could just keep drawing. Yeah, but what? how many good control effects does this Tron deck have? So now the real question is, is this, like, is this card too good? This really should be, like, a discussion of, like, should these cards be banned? Is this a bannable card? Is repeatable card draw in Popper the way to go? Mog's Crusher sees play. We're gonna need cheaper, uh, uh, cheaper popper cards. Okay, now I'm just curious. Creature. Eldrazi. Uh, legal popper. What do we got? Oh, holy smokes! We can make an Eldrazi Tron deck. We might have to splash a little blue, but it's possible. Yeah, Eldrazi Sky Spawner is going to go in that deck. We can make a bl it's a blue red Eldrazi possible. Hand of Emrakul. 
This is a tribal deck I can get behind. There's tons of common Eldrazi. There's tons of common ones. Easily make one. Chazzy Brown says this card sucks. It'll it'll wind up being a card every deck gets forced to play. Was it like that? Did every deck? I don't see every deck playing this. I mean, this is clunky as hell. This is a very clunky card. I can see this being played in a control deck. I can see it being played in a Tron deck. I don't see it being played in other decks, though. I can't see, like, elves playing this deck, but maybe that elf deck with Ulmox Crusher and Bow Equipment card was fun to play. A Tier 1 Popper deck should lose to Tier 2 Pioneer decks, in my opinion. That would indicate a somewhat, somewhat balanced. That's a very fresh take. I haven't heard that one. A Tier 1 Popper deck should lose to Tier 2 Pioneer decks. That's the barometer we're playing here. Just cheat them out with Maelstrom Colossus. Really? Every deck played this card. Okay, that is that is that is a thing though. It was an 80% of decks, but not in aggro, so that was like the 20% of the decks. I played it in Ponza. There's Ponza and Popper. I agree. I can see it would have a very limited use. Uh, in my opinion, Popper should be just as explosive potentially as modern on a given turn, given the deep card pool. Uh, there was a Gavin video where he explained this ban and a tog because Affinity and Tron were out of control. Ban the Tron lands. But they don't want to do that, do they? No, they don't. Oh well, they, they've been calling for the banning of Tron in modern for eternity and it never happened. It's not going to happen. And it's pretty, it's okay, it's fine, you know. Tron goes up and down in popularity. It's it's not, it's, just play some aggro deck and you'll beat Tron. That's it, that's the solution. They're not really going to do anything by turn three. When they're on the draw, they're sweating bullets. Because of the way card draw worked, you kind of had to have it. For the point about Ponza, uh, the M... Wally, uh, yeah, the Acid Moss card is legal, so yeah, Ponza is a real deck. Oh yeah, blow up a card, get a get a basic. Tron is a necessary evil. There we go. I think you know what? I'll tell you what I like about Tron. I like this deck has personality. It's the deck you get three cards in play, three lands in play, and boom, you have a ton of mana. This is a very unique deck, and of course, it's. It's got str you got st your strategy against it. Blow up one of these lands. Don't get the don't let them get the combo. Don't let them get the combo. I like decks that have personality. Tron has personality. Death Shadow has personality. Burn has personality. I like that in a deck. All right, so it sounds like this card was banned because everyone's playing it. I don't think that necessarily makes it like a super broken card, but many times in the past, things like Mental Misstep, for example, it becomes a card becomes a problem when everyone is playing it. So if everyone if everyone has it's it's funny in Magic, it's like um, if everyone has it, no one's allowed to have it. That's just how it is. That's the that's the rule. All right, next up. Chatterstorm. I mean, I'm not even gonna defend this card by any means. This is a storm card. Green one generic. Create a one one green squirrel creature to token, and it's got storm. So is this like? Hold on. Um, was this just a second combo enabler? With uh, no hold on. This is worse than grape shot because you could just put up like seven one one squirrels on turn one or two. And that might be enough to win the game. Whereas with Grape Shot, you absolutely need 20 damage. So is this just better than Grape Shot? Bring out your blockers. And that may not be enough. How many blockers do you need? If I have 7 power in play and you have 1 blocker, I attack for 7. I deal 6. Then you have a blocker out. Then I attack for 4. Well, it, might not, it may not get through. What's the, what was the average Chatterstorm? Witherfang says, first a day of class with this. Good re Oh yeah, first day of class. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control this turn, put a plus one plus one counter on it and it gains haste until end of turn. Learn, you may reveal, learn 
a lesson card you own from outside the game and put it into your hand. What's the whole Does that work like that? This wasn't a lesson card. Love the flavor text on Chatterstorm, says Steven. Um, friends, for foragers, fuzzy fighters. Tonight, we're after more than just acorns. Laryl, deep forest hermit. All right, furry fam. The furry fam. There's got to be a real community out there called that. <laughs> Shout out to the furries. Old Storm payoffs are banned. Instead of banning fast mana, they just killed the payoff. Like, so even Grape Shot is banned? Spoiler alert. Just looking. At... Oh god, it is banned. Okay. Spoiler alert. Great. So ban Storm's not allowed. No Storm. They should just downshift. What's it called? Um... Damping Sphere. Yeah, they should just make this common. Problem solved. To be honest, Storm is a really annoying deck to play against. Storm is always very frustrating. The only reason F Storm is not banned in Modern is because they printed an outrageous number of hate cards against it. To the point where it all figured itself out. Just prove that Storm was only good if you didn't interact with it. But if you have any interaction at all, it's screwed. Grape Shot is super banned. Don't worry, we'll get to it. Okay, anyway, Chatterstorm, it seems like... I, I, the way I'm looking at it is that Modern doesn't have the... Uh, what's it called? Sorry, not Modern. Popper doesn't have the tools whatsoever to deal with Storm. So they have to ban the cards. Like, is, what, is there any defense for Storm against Storm? They should give... Popper OG Tybalt. I've always viewed Storm as the deck you can play perfect against and still lose. Yeah. I don't mind Storm in paper. You mean Popper? Online just... Oh, okay. I don't mind Storm in paper. Online it feels terrible. Hit six and go make some coffee. I don't think I would be different in paper. You'd enjoy your opponent just playing out the cards in paper. And it, what's even worse is if there's a lot of mana... I, I think it's worse in paper because you have to keep track of how much mana they have so they don't have any extra mana against you because they can lose track. You have to keep track of storm count so they don't have an extra storm on you. Oh, you got some defense. You got weather the storm. I don't know if that will work so well versus chatter storm, but it's fine. It's better than nothing. Yeah, you got to fight fire with fire with the weather the storm. It can be a def defense against storm, but that's... It's okay. Several people entered Magic the Gathering Online Popper Leagues with a deck of 60 Forests. Upon playing their first Forest, their opponent would have quit to avoid the Storm matchup. It was banned shortly afterwards. That is hilarious. What a bluff. See, I think you could literally just get into Magic the Gathering Online, get a bunch of Forests. The Forest might even be default in your account, and then start playing Popper Leagues and win. What about the person calling the bluff? Forest, 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 forest. Oh, they didn't play anything. They must have had a really clunky hand. Hmm, nah, yeah, don't need that. Could use the tokens to keep track of storm count. All right, Chatter Storm is gone. With good reason. Not really going to defend the storm archetype. Cloud of Fairies. Blue one generic flying. When Cloud of Fairies enters the battlefield, untap up to two lands. It's a 1-1 one, one creature. And it cycles. So it's like a really efficient card. Ugh, what What is that good with? Is there any, like, direct way to break this card? I mean, I know you could go Cloud of Fairies until, like, Spell Stutter Sprite, which makes Spell Stutter Str Sprite, like, extra busted. So, like, we've got Spell, Stutter, Sprite. Honestly, I have no idea if this the, these two cards were played in combination. And so then you would have two fairies in play, and you have definitely uh, have a better chance of countering your opponent's spells. When Spell, Stutter, Sprite enters the battlefield, counter target spell with converted mana cost X or less, where X is the number of fairies you control. So Cloud of Fairies helped you catch up to fairies on the battlefield. Good with the bounce lands, like Karoo lands. 
That does raise a point. Green really isn't good in Popper, so a forest would be a red flag. Ah, interesting. So it only signified one deck. I think its interaction with Spell Starter Sprite is the reason it got banned. But is it really that good? It, you know, I mean, it is a 1-1 flyer evasive creature. It can get in for the beatdown. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, people, you had to, you basically had to spend a card in order to counter their spell. Because it's 1-1 fairy. I don't know if it's going to do the job. But I guess it does. Get all these, you get enough 1-1s one on the battlefield. You got a 10 turn clock on your hands. Yeah, fairies are a strong archetype in Popper. Good readings. Infinite mana with Sunscape Familiar or Bounce Lands. It was the first version of Peregrine Drake in Popper. Speaking of another banned card. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so hold on. Sunscape Familiar. Is this really infinite mana? Green spells and blue spells you play cost one less to play. I don't understand how this is uh, infinite mana. When it airs the battlefield, untap up to two lands. So you're netting mana. You're getting mana, sure. So you can pay you pay two, float one, play the cloud of fairies, untap two. You get a lot of mana on the battlefield, but I don't see the infinite here. I think Tron played it, maybe. Blue Tron, cloud of fairies, untap that Urza's tower. Is there some discussion here that I'm missing? Mikey J says, spoiler alert, I fear duress affects way more than weathered the storm when I used to regularly play storm. Hand disruption is still good. Oh, we have 200 people here. You people love Popper. Have I picked the wrong format? Is Popper secretly more popular than modern? So two crew lands, Archeomancer, Ar Ghostly Flicker. Well, come on, that is that is an insane combo you have to assemble. Popper is not a two card combo format. No, not that it looks like. This is just, it looks like this is just good value. Any format with a P in it is awesome. How many formats are there? Popper. Vintage, Legacy, Modern, oh, Pioneer. Playing the Fairy Hold Up Counter Spell is also pretty strong. It's just a 1-1. One, one. It's just a 1-1 one, one Flyer. You can cycle it. It gives it some extra utility. I mean, it's a cool card. It's a cool card. I like it. I don't... Is this really ban worthy? Is this really ban worthy? Even 1-1 one, one can kill you. I mean, in, in those Bono Blue Tempo decks, I get it. I understand. They absolutely will kill you. Oh, yeah. Pre-modern pre and pre-legacy. What the hell? Popper, pre-modern, pre-vintage, pre-mander. Pre <laughs> ah, you guys make me laugh. Witherfang sees it's ban worthy here. Let's hold on. Let's, lay, let's take a look at the metagame. Let's take a look at the Popper metagame. How well is Blue doing? Blue's not doing that. It's doing okay, I guess. Okay, it's doing okay. We have Is It Fairies. It would definitely go in there. It, actually, Popper looks pretty balanced right now. 10%, 9%, 9%, 7.5%, 6.5%. .5. Looks like it's in a good spot. Mono Blue Fairies, though, hurting. Mono Blue Fairies need some help. It's hard to give this card Mono Blue Fairies and not to anything else. Oh yeah, there is one two-card combo. Midnight Guard and Presence of Gond. Infinite little creatures. Can confirm... Can confirm Pack Wars is a tr only truly luck-based format. Popper is my casual go-to format. and I introduced my girlfriend to Magic with it. I made six different decks with identical deck box and we picked them at random to play each other. Oh, that's fun. You got the gauntlet. You got the gauntlet. Okay, so... Sup at Tilt Gaming says it's definitely ban worthy, made mono blue dominant, and enables several combo decks. What combos? 
Or is it just like a, it's just a good man, it's just good value on mana. Early evasive creature, net zero on mana, cycles it if you need to, a bit overloaded for popper. Holy crap. Jeez, the bar is so low on popper that this one one, this one one fairy broke the format. Are they naked? I wanna say these fairies are naked. There's a lot of there's a lot of cards out there in Magic that are pretty nude. I mean, even Thassa is like I think she's she's just she's she's just bearing everything. No clothes whatsoever. Anyway, okay, Cloud of Fairies. I will I am not thrilled with this banning, but I will assume that this is just a good card. This is just a good card for the format. Oh, here's a spicy one. Cloud Post. So, we can have Tron, but we can't have Cloud Post. Or did they, they got rid, or I guess, I assume the one that gains life is still legal. The one that, um, the one that, uh, you know what? When we're done with this popper ban list, we're gonna look at, we gotta look up every single naked card on in Magic the Gathering. Okay, this one should stay banned, enough said. I mean, it is it is banned in modern for a reason. But do they have, whoops, do they have the enablers here? Cloud Post is also easier to assemble. It is, is much easier to assemble. <laughs> I say, bring, bring on the nearly nude cards. Bearscape, baby. I dislike how people usually tell me Popper is a weak format because it's all comments until I bust out bust out one of my decks and beat their Pioneer or Modern deck. Really? What Popper decks are strong enough to beat? What Popper decks are strong enough to beat a Modern deck? I'd love to see. Someone's got to make a video on that. Hot take. Cloud of Fairies was in standard. It would be busted. I think at the time, though, it was completely grossly overtaken by the <laughs> combo decks. Way worse things to worry about back then. One, vid one video of Modern Burn versus Popper Burn is funny as hell. Well, Popper Burn is great now. They've got Swift Spear, which could end up getting banned in that format. Can't believe they put Swift Spear into Popper. That was ridiculous. Oh yeah, the, okay, so, but just by burn spells? Because the creatures suck. Well, maybe the creatures now are good. Now that, that they have Swift Spear, it'll work out. So even before Swift Spear could compete with Modern? I don't see myself ever losing to a Popper deck. Popper, sorry, a Popper burn deck with Merfolk. I guess it just, but like, I have counter spells. Fire Blast is not a big deal. You Fire Blast and it gets countered, you're toast. I think we can have Fire Blast in Modern, personally. Okay, get, getting back on topic. We got Cloud Post here. Imagine Tron, but using Cloud Post and Glimmer Post instead of 12 Tron lands and with Crop Rotation and Expedition Map. Is Crop Rotation a legal card? Is that common? Oh, oh. It is a popper legal card. I thought it was uncommon. Oh, it was common back in the day. Back in the day. All right. This is more dangerous than I thought it was. Yeah, popper has proper. I thought map was banned. Are we getting to that? Oh, well, spoiler alert is not banned. I thought it was banned. Or was it used to be banned? I can't see, I can't click on, thank you very much for the super chat though. Uh, I can't click on links uh, when I'm streaming. This creator made some content about Popper and Modern. If you give me the creator's name, that might be helpful. And maybe we'll check it out one day in the future. Fire Blast and Modern would be nice. Yeah, if, if Burn ever gets fa falls out of favor, you just give him Fire Blast and hopefully that will even things out. Uh, 
Uh, I would love to see it unbanned so I can cloud p play cloud post control. All right. Which also, I guess, expedition expedition map. Yeah, it's popper legal. I didn't think this was legal. Wasn't it, like, am I crazy? Wasn't this banned, or was it, like, on the chopping block? Like, people wanted it banned. I can't tell. Like, I've ah, fixed the format by banning Expedition Map. I swear it was banned, but, like, I, I don't play the format, so I don't know. It was banned. So why did they unban it? Why would you get, why would you give a tool to Tron? Do we really need to make Tron's life easier? Anyway, okay. So uh, between Expedition Map, like, see, we could we could ban Expedition Map. We could ban uh, Crop Rotation. But then we could unban Cloud Post. What do you guys think about that, huh? What do you guys think about that, huh? Yeah? Nah? No? Do I have a booing sound effect on here? What's the worst I have? I don't have... Where's my booing? Here. I think people could agree with that. Alright, moving on. Oh my god. This card? The next card up is a card so many people wanted banned in Modern back in like 2014, 2015. It's cranial plating. It's like... The way people recognized that affinity was a problem back then, like it had too many like easy free kills, but for some stupid reason, a lot of people were saying Mox Opal's not the problem, cranial plating is the problem. Oh, that mill guy on his shorts videos. Yeah, I know who that mill guy. Yeah, thank you very much again for the super chat. Here, I'll give you a nice that's right sound effect. I should be using these more. When people say something good? When people say when people say that we should ban cranial plating in modern? When people say we ban Mox Opal in modern? That's right. Yeah, 230 watches. Smash that like button. Can we get Nikachu and Phil from Thraben U to play Modern Merfolk vs. Popper decks? Unique content appealing to two formats when formats collide. Okay, so Cran Cranial Plating, without a doubt, is a very good card. Equip creature gets plus one, plus zero for each artifact you control. And we already recognize that this is a format that plays with the artifact lands. So this is going to be pretty big no matter what you put it on. You put it on that Ornithopter, it's going to be a really frustrating problem. I'm not really familiar with how good the removal is in this format, but... Um, well, whatever. It's it's a strong card, and they don't really need Mox Opal because they do have the artifact lands as like a pseudo replacement. Cranial plating was never valid in Popper when the format was born. It was already banned. In really, yeah, Popper affinity would be ridiculous if cranial plating was still around. It seems like they banned a lot of cards from Affinity. Cranial plating wouldn't be a pleasant card to face in pop or should stay banned. The removal is very good, then why are we banning cranial plating? Just blow up the card. Is there just no artifact destruction? Cranial plating was banned for too much math as for blockers energy. What's going on in the art for cranial plating? What's that little thing hanging from the bottom? Uh, I think it's a foot. I think it's a foot, and it's like a stand. I think that's what I'm looking at here. It's like it's a it's like a it's like you know the stand to a lamp. So anyway, it's a stand. It's hooking into like I guess the I don't know in like the somewhere the spinal cord used to be, and then it's just hanging off of that. People wanted cranial plating banned because they were dealing with the post-traumatic stress disorder from Mirrodin where uh, plating sticking meant to death. So this card has never been legal? This card has never been legal. It's just auto ban. We don't even know how good or bad it is. I don't like that. I'm not a fan of that. I'm a fan of you, you release the hounds and you see what happens. And then if it's still bad, still ban it. Yeah, it's a skeleton. Wearing the plating on a stand. 
Removal quality is way better in Popper than creature quality, but the problem is that Affinity can easily split all his hand and win before you draw a removal spell. You know what? Let's unban and see how bad it actually is today, says Witherfang. Why not? Gulf says, I always thought it was a stand, like the plating is on display in a museum. That's the way I look at it. This is stolen merchandise from the museum. Stolen property. Yeah, it's a display. Yeah, the uh, it was either banned the ban the lands or get rid of plating. I don't think that's right. There are some for fun no bans popper tournaments, and Affinity always places first or second. All right, that could that could be enough. That's enough for me. I mean, I'm not gonna deny. I mean, maybe maybe in this format the artifact land should be banned. Imagine this without the artifact lands. Would it still be as good? I imagine Affinity would get its legs chopped off in this format without the artifact lands. Because then you'd literally have to be playing cards. For, you have to literally be playing artifacts in order to enable any of your other artifacts. Add more artifact hate than unban. What would you rather... Well, I mean, but what, what would you rather see? This legal... Sorry, the... Cranial plating banned, artifact lands legal, or the other way around, artifact lands banned, cranial plating legal. Because I have a feeling, if you if you ban the artifact lands in this scenario, every creature you kill makes cranial plating, like, way worse. The instant speed equip is the killer. Cranial, pl cranial plating is on display in a museum in England, but it was pilfered from a tomb in Egypt. <laughs> artifact lands is, are what make Popper unique? No, it's not. They got artifact lands in Legacy. They see no play. Philip brings up a great point. Since it has instant speed switching, you can just move it between your creatures. Yeah, but you need the double black. Double black is not easy. Like, how many black mana sources are you going to play? You probably can't. Like, let's look at a popper list. Let's look. Let's look at a popper list. You popper plays want to look at a popper list? Okay, where's Affinity? It's not even a good deck. How far do we have to go? Mono blue. How far do we have to go to find a playable pop, uh, Affinity deck? Or is it named something else? Tron, green aggro. I can't even find it. Boris Bully, Blackburn, Bogles, Kiln Fiend, Is It Fairies. What's it called? Affinity is basically dead now due to all the bans. Well, we gotta unban something. Wait, it needs at least one winning card. Okay, this I this is unjust. If it's dead. Oh, is it bad when naming Affinity? So what is it called? Like where do I find it out of all these archetypes? Spark is it mono blue? Looks like there's an art artifact creature in the in the picture, but it's not. The hunt for an affinity deck. Where did the artifacts go? We got elves. <laughs> it's called Grix's control. Oh, galvanic blast here. Uh, does not feel affinity enough to me. Even though it plays all the artifact lands, this is a pretty. This is not it. If that's if that's affinities these days, we absolutely can unban cranial plating in this format. I don't see it. They've banned affinity out of existence. They went too far. They banned the cranial plating. That's as affinity as F. Check the creatures. Okay, hold on. We go back to Grixis control. So we got the Krark Clan Shaman. Sacrifice an artifact. Krark Clan Shaman deals one damage to each creature without flying. Costs one less to cast for each artifact you control, says the Gear Seeker Serpent. Gurmog Angler has nothing to do with artifacts. A mirror enforcer. This is barely an affinity deck. Come on, are you telling me if we give this deck cranial plating that it's going to be over the overpowered busted? 
Boros Aggro is artifact based. Grixis is artifact based. Blackburn is artifact based. Blackburn? It's not. Eh, yeah, it's got a lot of artifacts, not gonna lie. But do they make use of these? These are not real affinity decks. This is, none, of, none of these are affinity decks. Not the way I see it. Unban cranial plating. Unban it! Uh, this this thing is they they yeah that is not affinity anymore. I cannot call it affinity. I say it's pseudo affinity. I would no. I would more call it. It's just like a artifact control. So the Grixis control deck that's like artifact control. There is no you know we got get the Memnites, Ornithopters, Frogmite, and crap like that and cranial plating. This is uh unju I think. They went too far with the bannings. And I don't even know if they could use this card in those other decks. If this card is playable in all the other decks that are playing with artifact mana, okay, keep it banned. But if not, I think this maybe can be an unban. All right, next up. Days. I don't want that days. I want the OG days. This was around for a long time. Days is a funny card in that it doesn't it like it looks fair. Like it just looks like a card. Ghostbeard became thank you so much for becoming a member. Thanks so much, Ghostbeard. This card it looks it looks fair. Hey, you can pay one mana, you can play around it. Uh it's like Tempos the person who play, you know you tempo yourself out by returning the land back to your hand It has uh, it has its problems But after playing for years with this card But and this is on the chopping block in legacy a lot of people want this band in legacy It's banned in Popper right now, but people are not happy about it in legacy whatsoever It's uh, it's a potential it's a potential to go Well, oh, thank you so much for the super chat balder Oops. Congrats on getting 200 viewers before Deckless Review. Everyone show some love. Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Ah, eh, we've hit over 200 before. Days and Gush straight up wrecked the format. Couldn't stop it. But Days was legal for a very long time, right? It was super legal for a very long time. This card got banned thanks to Delver Fairies. Please remove this card from the screen as quickly as possible. So it sounds like from the uh, Popper community, you guys saw the problem immediately. Or maybe you guys just got sick of it over time. Can we become YouTube members if we're in Canada? Absolutely. And I believe you pay in your own currency. Like, it's $5 to become a member, but it's always... Or maybe it, maybe they raise... Uh, I can't remember how it is. Yeah, I think it's $5 no matter what your currency is. Oh yeah, we forgot our sponsors. Okay, hold on, let's take a break to thank FusionGamingOnline.com, today's sponsor, where you can get all your popper cards. And they ship internationally. It's a Canadian local game store, Canadian prices, but they'll ship internationally. Deal of the week this week, save 15% off streets of new Capenna singles and sealed products. Sealed product can only be sent within Canada, but the singles can be sent worldwide. But here's the good news. 15% is not enough for you. Use coupon code NIKACHU at checkout for an additional 5% off all your purchases. We're also going to thank Mana Traders, the premier place. Mana Traders, the premier place to rent Magic cards online. And you could rent, for I think they're like lowest tier, you can rent any Popper deck to play Popper online. Basically the hub of Popper in the world. You can support the channel renting We're using my Mana Traders link in the description below or use coupon code Nikachu underscore WBN to get 10% off your first two months. Okay, back to days. Back to days. Days was fine. I'm on a blue Delver player, of course. All the Delver players would say so. Oh, a Tog being banned is the main reason traditional affinity is kind of dead. Well, then they should have did the switcheroo. A Tog is, I think, a lot harder to interact with than Cranial Plate. Or maybe it's going to be the same thing. Maybe Fling is the card we need to ban. How about that, huh? We ban Fling. Anyway, it was. They let it sit there for a long time. Around the time the professor started complaining about it and making more videos on the format is when they started taking it more seriously. Because I think after like 10 years, people are getting sick of this card in Legacy as well. 
Gush was popper legal. It was banned alongside Days and Getaxium Probe on the infamous Blue Monday. I remember that Monday. Canadian YouTube membership costs five beaver tails and two skin seal, seal skin hides. What about the Saskatchewan seal skin bindings? For anyone who watched, uh, what's his name? The fake stuntsman. Oh, I don't remember. Don't remember his name. Ferrothar, hello and greetings from Hot uh, Krosha, Nikachu. I wish you the best every day. Thank you very much. Sounds like I, w I wish you the best every every day as well. Popper is just Legacy Light. Well, it used to. Nowadays, it's not. They banned all the good Legacy cards. And good Vintage cards. Andrew says, unban days ASAP. I miss days, foil, gush, blue, delver, but good riddance again. Nikachu, do you think Kodama of the West tree should be banned? Kodama? Is this a popper card? The West tree, they have so many different trees. Too many trees. Pfft. In what format? Reach. Modified creatures you have tra have trample. Whenever a modified creature you control deals combat damage to a player, search your library for a basic land card. This is unplayable. No. Unless there's some format where this is good. Banning fling wouldn't matter. A tog was used alongside Dispel of the Vault. You could just uh, deal a lot of damage for free. That's why Dispel is banned too. Yeah, but they ban, ban Dispel. So we ban fling. Keep the Atog. What would a no bandless popper deck look like? It would look like an affinity deck, it sounds like. It would just be affinity. Oh my god, Git Probe was so good. I miss it, but it needed to go. It made popper infect so consistent. That was also. We'll get to a Gitaxium Probe eventually, but uh, Gitaxium Probe is also one of those cards that are like. It was, it was legal too long in every format. I think people grossly underestimate the value of seeing someone's hand for nothing. And I think also people grossly underestimate the value of cards like Thoughtseize. I think there's more value to just seeing your opponent's hand than people would re than people believe or like to admit. Having playing with perfect information makes playing the game of Magic way easier. Way way easier. So there's more value to Thoughtsies than people would think, anyway. So, I mean, this card, there's also, of course, a lot of blue decks in Popper that use this card. The mana is cheap. I mean, it, it was definitely a worthy ban. And it's probably on its way to Legacy one day. People are starting to get around to, like, thinking, well, the blue-red Delver decks keep are always good anyway. Maybe we actually have to be stripping away some of the core cards instead of banning all the other cards around it. The best popper deck was Framed High Tide. Framed is the best common card in the game. Too bad it has a sliver border. Or oh, silver border. Oh, so it's not legal. How is Thoughtseize underrated if it's an auto clued in Pioneer and played in Modern? It's underrated because people think the value to Thoughtseize... People think the true value of Thoughtseize is stripping away someone's card from their hand, like they're good cards. And they completely ignore how valuable just looking at the opponent's hand is. I did play with Peak once. It has seen it has seen plays. I, unfortunately, Peak is just a smidge too expensive. <laughs> you remember when Peak was good? I don't. This uh, hey, Splinter Twin played Peak. Played four Gita it sometimes played four Gitaxium Probe and one Peak. Anyway, okay, so we agreed. The Days is a ban-worthy card and probably it should not come back. Thank you very much, everyone, for supporting, becoming members of the Coffee Crew. Also, for all, all the Super Chats supports the channel. Lets me know to keep waking up every, every weekday morning for this conversation. But, of course, thank you for becoming part of the conversation. Because without you... We're not talking about anything. Nothing useful, anyhow. So keep brewing up those coffees, and we'll keep brewing up the magic. Take care of yourselves, and I will see you at the next cup.